Welcome back everybody. This is when we are going to create our backend API. This is the goal of this video and in the upcoming videos we're going to connect to it from React. Now this is a point where things get difficult and you've been sticking with it this entire time. So I just wanted to give a little message of encouragement, which is congratulations and thank you for sticking with this series. I know it's hard, but for once you're doing something with your life and there's just so much potential. You're not quite there yet. You're getting there. So there is a chance if you stick through the series, you will not just be that weak peasant that you've always been. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of motivation to get through the rest of this series. Let's jump in and build that API. And again, thank you so much. Where we left off in the previous video is we created the most basic Django application, the default application. What we want to do is we want to first open it in Visual Studio Code, similar to how we have our React application here. And then we want to get it up in version control, get it up on GitHub so we can save our code. And then you guys can reference my code if you need any help or you just want to clone the project. So to start, let's open it in Visual Studio Code. And if you have your server running, you can control C out of it. So that will close the running process. And then you can say code dot, which is a shortcut to open Visual Studio Code from the terminal. Alternatively, if this doesn't work, you can just open Visual Studio Code from a new window, file, new window, and then find that path. But I'll use the code dot. That's going to open a new Visual Studio Code window. And I wanted to show you if that doesn't work, you can do Command Shift P or probably Control Shift P on Windows. And then this is the command you're looking for. So you can type in path shell command install code command in path. So that'll create the code command and putting it in your path is what allows you to use it from the terminal. So here are all of our files. The way we created our applications, not quite as nice as react where it already generates a git ignore and initializes a git repository. So we're going to do that ourselves. So we'll go up here, go to new terminal. And now we can do all of our terminal stuff from here instead of from here. So you can just close out of this one. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and say git init to initialize an empty git repository. This will start tracking 5,000 changes, which we don't really need all these. So we need to create a git ignore. So you can say touch dot git ignore or just create the file right clicking in new file but this is the git ignore. We're going to find a good git ignore template on the internet, which will only check in the most important files. So when I look for git ignore files, I'll just usually search git ignore for whatever I'm doing. And I like to use Topdol. their stuff's pretty good. And it's really easy just to copy, paste that over here in the git ignore. And you'll notice when you save, this number is going to drop down to seven. So now it's only tracking the essential files that we need in version control. At this point, we should be able to say git add dot, which will add the current directory, everything in it, and then git commit dash m initial project. If this is your first time using git, you might need to do some setup for your username, email, all that jazz. You can also use this tab over from Visual Studio Code if you are more comfortable with that. Now let's figure out how to push this code up to GitHub. We've done this once already with React. So go into GitHub and we're going to create a new repository. I'm gonna call this React Backend Django. I'll make this public for you and I will share the URL as well. Go ahead and skip all the other stuff. We'll take these three lines of code since we already created the repo locally. Here is the URL if you want to refer to any of my code. So just slash Caleb Curry and then slash the name of the repo. All right, let's go over to the terminal and paste these lines. What these will do is rename the main branch if it's master, and then it'll track a remote branch up in GitHub. So now at this point, we should be able to say git push origin, which is the name of our remote location. And you will issue that command anytime you have changes you wanna push up to GitHub. By default, we're already good because that was part of the command. You can see that git push origin. Now I'm safe to record this video because if I screw up, I can just reset my local changes and we'll be good to go. So the very first thing we want to do since we are working on a Python project here is activate our virtual environment. So we'll say dot dot vnv slash bin slash activate or the Windows equivalent, which I showed you in the previous episode. So now that we're in a virtual environment, we can say Python dash dash version instead of Python 3. And you can see it'll say Python 3.9. So when I'm within that virtual environment, which we created with Python 3, 
we don't have to say Python 3 anymore. It also gives us access to pip directly. So when we say pip dash dash version, we're on 22 for Python 3.9. So we no longer have to say Python 3 dash M pip install, and then the name of whatever we want to install. Instead, we could just say pip install Django REST framework as an example. So let's go ahead and install that. Warning, you're using pip version 22.0.4 and it's suggesting I upgrade. So you can say pip install dash dash upgrade pip. And that will get everything good to go. So you might notice something interesting. There's no changes in our source control here. So one major difference between how React works and how Django works is that when we install something, it will automatically update our package.json when we're working in React. For a Django project, it doesn't automatically add everything to a package list. We have to create that file manually if we want to keep an updated list. The actual installed package goes inside of our virtual environment, which is grayed out because it's not being checked into source control. So what we will do is say pip freeze, and you'll notice that this will put out all of the different packages we have installed. So we can say pip freeze, and then redirect this into a file called requirements.txt. So by convention, this is the file name that'll keep track of what packages we've had installed. And if you want to use this project later, how do you do the equivalent of npm install you might be familiar with from React? Well, you would say pip install dash r requirements.txt. And that's going to go through that file and install every single one. So as a friendly reminder, whenever you update your packages that you've installed and need for your project, you'll want to add it to the requirements.txt by issuing that freeze command again. So what we'll do is we'll say git add and then git commit add requirements.txt and then git push. Perfect. All right, we just got done with all that boring garbage. Now what I wanna do is I want to start working with Django REST framework, which is how you build a REST API inside of Django. So REST APIs, that's what we were talking about in the previous episode. It's basically just an agreed way of transferring data between applications. So this is going to allow us to get data, create new data, update data, and delete data. And it's all going to be in a JSON format. So this is going to be very similar to working with objects in JavaScript. JSON is actually JavaScript object notation. So it's a very easy thing to pull into our React application. And I've already kind of mentally prepared you here because these are JavaScript objects. Will it be exactly like this? Maybe not, but we'll be able to switch in new data fairly easily without changing our entire application. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a model in our Django application. This is going to be a representation of data. We're going to create a URL path so we have a location to access this data. And then we're going to create what's known as a serializer. And this is going to describe how we go from database objects to JSON data. So lots of stuff, let's just jump in and get to it. So if you remember when we ran our server last time, we did Python manage PY run server. And it gives us this 18 unapplied migrations. This is because we are working with a structured database. By default, it's SQLite with Django, but easily substitutable for other relational databases such as Postgres or other ones out there as well. If you want to do a NoSQL database, then you'll probably want to do some additional research on your own because this is what we're going to use for now. But this is an important thing to note is that when we are using a relational database, we have to use these migrations, which are basically describing the changes that we need to make to the database from our code. That way we don't have to work with SQL directly. So that might be a lot if you're new. And again, we're kind of doing a backend crash course here, but basically what we're going to want to do is quit the server or you can keep it running and open a new terminal window here. And we're going to say Python manage.py migrate. So when we create a model, we will need to add that migration as well. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go into our customers and we will say new file models.py. And in this file, we are going to describe any model that we need for our application. Now remember, model is just another word for database table, essentially. You can think about it as the different entities we need to describe. And it's gonna look like this. We're gonna say from django.db, 
import models. So pretty similar to React, it's just flipped around, whereas in React you use import whatever from whatever. Python, you're gonna do from whatever, import whatever. <laughs> All right, so hopefully you got that figured out. And then we'll say class customer, and we'll put parentheses here, a colon. Inside of the parentheses is where we define inheritance. So this customer is going to be a derived class from models.model. And then inside of the class, so this is very important, make sure you are indented. This is required in Python. So we will say name models.char field. And then inside of parentheses, we can give it different conditions. So max length being equal to 200, for example. And then we could do another one, say industry is models.char field, max length of say 100. So this will describe the attributes each customer is going to have. They're going to have a name and an industry. So to put this inside of the database, we're going to go down here and say python manage.py, make migrations, and then the name of our app, which is this right here, customers. So we'll type customers. No installed app with label customers. A quick fix for this is we basically have to go into our settings and say, hey, this project that we're working on, this is really important. So actually care about it. And to do that, you go in the installed apps and you're just going to add the name of your app, which is customers. Kind of dumb, but you just gotta do that. So now when we issue that command, it works. And we get this new migration file, which describes our changes to the database. And this is something we check into version control. So this is the migration and it describes the changes to the database and you can get a little bit more details here. Next up, we apply this migration to actually make this change to the database. So we can X out of that. We don't actually have to look at that file. We can just say python manage.py migrate. Hit enter and that will create the change on the database. And as a quick subtle but essential advertisement. We go through all of this stuff in the back end course in much more detail. And I have this ebook that shows every single step and all the important commands. So definitely consider checking that out. You can find links in my descriptions and pinned comments throughout this channel. But we're going to go over everything you need in these videos. But if you just need a little extra, that might be helpful. So let's get back to what we were doing. Let's make that URL path we were talking about. So this is going to go in urls.py. So this is similar to the routing in React, which we put inside of app.js. So here we're saying which paths go to which component. Similar thing inside of Django, the difference being we're going to put the path and then follow it up with a view, which I'll describe here in a sec. We will say path. And inside of here, we can say API slash customers and then this is going to go to views dot customers. This is basically the function that's going to accept the incoming request. I'll show you how to make that in a sec. So name and just call it customers. All right, so we have little squigglies here. We're gonna say from customers import views. So we're going to import a file from our own project. So we'll go into customers, right click new file, views.py and from here we will say def customers in parentheses you'll say request this is going to have data that describes the requests made from the client inside of here this is where we are going to invoke our serializer which goes from database objects to json data and return to client so this is just a comment inside of python you have to have something in your function so if you're just going to fill in a blank spot for now, you can use the word pass. So we're gonna come back to this. We need to create that serializer. So we'll go customers, new file, serializers.py. Now from within this file, you'll say from rest framework. This is something we actually have to add to our app. So we'll go back to settings. Ah, uh, yeah, there's so much jumping around, it's crazy. So we'll say rest framework. Someone needs to make a create Django REST framework app command. So that would be really helpful if you guys want to do that. Back to serializers, we'll say from REST framework, 
import serializers. Sometimes you'll get these issues here where it doesn't recognize. And what you need to do is you need to tell Python of your virtual environment. So you can type in here, select interpreter. And from here, you will use this one with a star, Python 3.9.12 inside of the virtual environment. So clicking that and that goes away. And then we need to import our model. So from customers import models, or you can get a little bit more specific. So from customers dot models import customer. So that's going to import this guy right here. And now we're going to say class customer serializer. And this is going to inherit from serializers dot model serializer. So very similar to how we created a model where we said what it's going to inherit from and we used that as the base class for our new class. So this describes our data and then the serializer describes how to serialize it. Inside of here we're going to have a nested class called meta. Say model is equal to customer. That's the model that we want to serialize. And then what fields we want on that is going to be underscore underscore all underscore underscore. Alternatively, you can put each attribute you want to include in a list, but I'm just gonna include everything here. Okay, so we have our serializer, it looks good. Everything is going good. Now we just have to use the serializer in our view. So hopefully we can get this right. What we will do is we will say, data is equal to customer.objects.all. That is how we get all of our customer objects. We will say from customers.models import customer. Next up, we're going to serialize all that data. So we'll say serializer and assign it the value customer serializer. This is going to create a new customer serializer object and we're gonna pass in our data and say many is equal to true with a capital T. Lastly, we're going to return JSON response, which we can import. So from django.http import JSON response. And inside of here, we pass what we want to return. And we're getting a problem here. Customer serializer is not defined. We want to import that. So from customers.serializers import customer serializer. Return JSON response. Here we just pass the JSON data and I'll just do it as a single key value pair. So we will say customers and then colon serializer dot data. So we take this data variable, we pass it through the serializer and then we use serializer dot data to get the serialized version. This is basically the JSON compatible version that we're going to pass as a response. So that should be everything in theory. We just coded the whole thing without checking along the way. So hopefully we're not too far gone. From the terminal, we'll say python manage.py run server. Heading over to localhost 8000, we get page not found 404. And this is based on the URLs we defined. So let's check out our URLs real quick. We'll go over to URLs and we'll see we need to pass in API customers. So over to this here, we will say slash API slash customers. And it worked. The only problem is there's nothing in it, but this is a seriously good first step. Congratulations, especially if this was your first time using a backend language like this. If it was a little challenging, you might need to go through this video a couple of times or go a little bit slower following the Django course that I mentioned. In the next episode, what we're gonna do is we're going to learn how to add data into our JSON data there and consume it from the React front end. So it's gonna be pretty awesome. That's when we'll be able to see these pieces come together. As a friendly reminder, I am checking this code up into GitHub. So if you followed along and it was just a little too much, then you can always go to that repo, go to the commit history, copy the code at whatever point you need in this series. So I will make that commit now so you can see the message, which is adding our first get endpoint. Perfect. So we will commit all these and there you go.